Welcome to the Guest X Podcast, where my co-host Brian Hamaui and I uncover the latest technologies and human-driven initiatives that are raising customer expectations and forever changing how we define customer experience across a host of industries. If you are passionate about creating incredible content and unique experiences, join us as we talk to leading product and experience experts across the globe and learn about how today's most successful brands are setting themselves apart from the competition. Welcome to the Guest X Podcast. I am your co-host, Matthew Loney, here with my co-host. They, they like to call him Mr. Guest Experience, Brian Hamali. How you doing? I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Excited. Yeah. 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 We're getting it's, into conference. It's Friday. Yeah. And as we talked about in the last show, we're starting to get into conference season. Your schedule's filling up. You're already yes. you're already gonna be all over the place. So that's exciting. Yeah. You, uh, yeah, so is yours. I can't even keep track of where you are. I know we're gonna we're yeah, we're and I think you and I are splitting up this year a lot. So we're gonna we're gonna have to one will be remote and one will be at conferences, and then we can both feel like we were both at all of them. Exactly. That's right. what, well, it'll be fun to get to see people because that's what I need. I need to be at all conference. But I tell you what, no matter how many conferences I go to, the one I miss, I'm sitting there scrolling through LinkedIn like constantly, like a. 16 year old yeah. going, Oh, I'm not at the party. You know, you just feel like you're going to miss something. Forget the party. I'm missing the dinners. Well, the day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. some great. Well, there's some of those. I mean, I was scrolling through LinkedIn the other day because I missed Darm. And, and yeah, Darm, Darm was I, good. I, really gone. I, I really should have gone. I, the feedback I was getting from that conference and just watching everybody having dinner and going to the parties. I mean, I think Amy really knocked it out of the park this year. Yeah, she did nice. Um, but, yeah, I, I should have gone to that conference. Yes, yes, yeah, you should have. You should have. Yes, um, we sure. missed you. Well, I'm excited today because it's someone who our guest today is someone who can opine on as to the guest experience because although she does a lot of things within our industry, it's one of her jobs is to is to actually grade and rank and score guest experience from a just a complete honest perspective. And I think, you know, we were talking before we started, you know, I'm a big believer in scorecards, KPIs, you need them. It's not always about beating people up when they don't hit certain met. It's about understanding where you are in your journey and where you need to go and where you still need to improve. And so I, I'm thrilled, Brian, you want to, you want to jump in? Cause this is going to be a really fun show. Yeah. Today's uh, episode is, um, well, our guest is Deborah Labby. Deborah has been uh, developing several impactful initiatives in the short-term rental space for over the over many years, uh, including the global guest referral platform. Have you got? And she's currently working on the guest inspector, which is, I would say, our first mystery guest platform for the industry. Deborah, welcome to the show. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah we well, should have mentioned too, Brian. To while we were talking about conferences, we should have mentioned. Um, you know, Deborah's also involved in that. You've been involved in the conference space, right? Yes. I'm actually the co-director of the Book Direct Show. And this year we are going to be in Miami. In, in Miami. October. The big U.S. We're going to be there too. We are going right. to be. Yeah. The U.S. premiere. <laughs> I mean, this is going to be, and there's a lot of, lot of big names uh, supporting, yeah. just, uh, supporting that show's first appearance on this side of the pond. So excited about it. Yeah. Yeah, there's not many, not many areas, Deborah, you don't have your have your uh, have your hands in in this industry. Why don't um I do think that you're more prominent over in Europe probably. Um and yeah. and I think that's changing more and more um as both as US companies go over there and and then um these shows kind of come over here. So but if you can give a little bit of your background so people understand what where you come from to this industry. Sure. Yeah. So I started as a property uh, property manager, owner, actually, back in 2006 in Sydney, Australia. I started uh, renting my home. And slowly, slowly, I uh, started getting more properties on board, just word of mouth. And uh, I also started to realize that instead of just going and staying at my sister's place or going to a hotel, it was cheaper for me to go to Asia for a week. Accommodation and airfare instead of staying in a hotel in Sydney. So that began my, my leaping over towards Europe. And I ended up parking myself in Europe a lot of the year and running my business from Europe. So I've been doing that pretty much for the last 10 to 12 years. So 
all this talk of digital nomad, well, I've been doing it for quite a while, actually. I've actually been living out of a suitcase for about 10 years. So uh, right now, at this point in time, I'm living out of two suitcases because now I'm based in France and I did bring a second suitcase of clothes over with me. But otherwise, uh, yeah, I lead a very minimal life and I have been a guest many, many, many times. And then with my property manager experience as well, it sort of ties in all together with the guest inspector. It's really interesting because you've uh, you've seen the different facets of what it takes to run a vacation rental company, what it is to own a vacation rental company. Yeah. And then now you've gone into even being able to deliver with Have You Got the, the concept of making bookings easier for people to go through filter, find the right property, stay at the right property, right? And then you mm-hmm. took that into uh, the guest journey, which is mystery guest. So the question for you is, you know, how are we doing as an industry on the guest experience side? Are we are we meeting the guest expectation uh, okay. when it comes to running vacation rentals professionally? Okay. Now we mentioned earlier on about low barrier to entry. This is the problem I think with this industry. There's a very low barrier to entry. People learn as they go. Sure, there are plenty of Facebook groups and there are conferences, but a lot of people just start off on their own and just try and figure things out as they go. The problem is that this industry where you've got the newbie who doesn't really know what they're doing and you've got the professional company on this end, we're all painted by the same brush. We're all vacation rentals. So there are some people who are doing a really bad job and other people who are doing a brilliant job but we're still one industry. So the problem is bringing these people that don't know what they're doing or that that need some polishing to bring them up to a level where we can all be proud of our industry, of what the guests are actually experiencing. There are horror stories about what people find when they go to property, uh, to holiday rentals, something, you know, uh, ribs, eaten ribs that were found under a bedside table that had been there for a while. That. Yes. I mean, like, Disgusting. what is going on, guys? I mean, but there are some people who are doing a great job, yet there is a guest who is discovering things like that. So the problem is that everyone are, uh, everyone's at different levels. And how do we bring everyone up to the same level? The industry is too big. The service that I'm offering is a way to try to get you back up to that level, up to a good level. And, you know, you you shouldn't be scared of criticism. You know, that's the only way you're going to learn. And as Simon Lehman always used to say, you've got to stay at your rental. You've got to live in your rental. And I would say a lot of these property managers are not. No one is staying in their rental. They don't even go in and check between the cleaners. There was one one property that that I uh, inspected and it had a cigarette burn in the arm of the couch, like not even an attempt to hide it with a blanket or something. No, there it was with no cushions on the couch, no cigarette burn. Now, had the property manager ever gone into this property? Did the cleaner never make any mention of it? I mean, this is not, not acceptable. I'm paying you money and I have to sit on the couch with a cigarette burn in the arm next to me. No. No, no, it's not good enough. Plenty of cases like that. I, yeah. do, I feel like, Deborah, it would be interested to get your thoughts that the OTAs, part of the issue too, I think, is that the OTAs have made it easier for maybe those homes that aren't going to meet the standard to, at the time of booking, feel or appear to be more on plane with the ones that are. And, and so, mm-hmm. you know, because it, it is very... Uh, you know, it's very cookie cutter on an OT, on an OTA. I mean, you can tell that some have done maybe invested a little bit more into photography, but mm. so then I almost feels like like where if everybody's booking direct, right, book direct, but if everybody's booking direct, that might be it might be easier for for the better uh, guest experience, the property manager delivering that to set themselves apart before the guest book. And then show mm-hmm. up later to be disappointed, right? But it's almost like now that's gone, and now it's it's even compounded the problem because it, the guests really didn't have a way of knowing that it, it may not be a good experience. I mean, do you see that? You think the problem with the OTAs is they're just in it for the money. 
it doesn't matter what they rent. They just want their commission. At the end of the day, if the guest doesn't have a good time, they're going to leave a bad review. At the end of the day, someone else is going to come along who forgets to read the reviews and books it and stays and has a bad time. At the end of the day, this host, manager, whoever, owner, if their account gets cancelled or they get kicked off the OTA, they just start another one. So the OTAs, they have no control over the listings. They just, they're in it to make money. Now, a book direct property management company, they rent a book direct, their livelihood depends on giving the, the guest the best experience. There's going to be word of mouth. There's going to be return business. So I actually think that booking direct is better because also if there is something wrong, the property manager is well on phone call away. It's not trying to get through to Airbnb, you know, a help desk or, or booking.com. There's no filter there. So this is why, you know, part of the book direct show that that's what I'm passionate about, about actually liaising directly with a property manager for the best experience. Their livelihood depends on it. The OTA, their livelihood does not depend on the quality of the, of the properties on their site. Which is really, uh, it's an interesting comment because I, I am a big believer in the book direct movement, but. You know, our market specifically in Orlando, I've got 40,000 properties to contend against. I've got something like 800 property managers here. And for us to stand out, it's a very difficult exercise. Um, what we have found is that we're at the mercy of the OTAs here. Uh, and basically, even though I own the company, I don't own the company. I work for the OTAs. I work for the guests. I, own, I work for the homeowner. And I think over the last few years, I like to believe that I I uh, am in full control of my company, but I'm not. Uh, I'm at the mercy of all of those people before I, I have full control of my own company. I think that with the book direct movement, you have more control over your company, your guest experience, reviews, all of those kind of things. How do you make yourself stand out in a market like this? So that the book direct movement actually makes sense because it's a very expensive exercise. Mm, 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 mm. It doesn't necessarily have to be expensive. You're not going to uh, try to compete with the pay per clicks. I think it, it all boils down to your marketing and it, particularly your niche marketing. Obviously, you know, you, you've got to know your guest avatar. Where are they hanging out? Speak their language, approach them through their, the various social channels. But in your case, I would actually say, if you've got 800 property managers there, why don't you form your own listing site mm. and, and make it niche, make it, make yourself something special. And, and maybe guests don't really understand direct bookings yet, but you know, this is the whole point of, of the conference and things like that. Getting more property managers aware of educating your guest. So every guest that stays with you should be talking about you and you, their experience with you. And that word of mouth is, is priceless. It's better that they say to everyone they've had a great time staying with you than, and then leaving a, I mean, look, leaving a, an, a review on an OTA is great, but you want word of mouth. You want them coming back to stay with you. So I, I would actually, yeah, I would form some, some sort of community of your own property managers and create your own listing site. Hmm. It's interesting. Yeah. interesting. And that, 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 yeah, you've seen that happen a little bit. I am um, Alex in yeah. condo world over in Myrtle beach, you know, condo world is a manager, but then a lot of the other managers list on condo world and, um, you know, they've kind of, yeah. Yeah. you know, they list other places, but they, but that is a way I think they're all working together to try to kind of own their market. And, um, yeah. and that's, that's interesting. You know, you know, Vince Perez. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. So Vince Perez with the Stays Group. Yep. So he's got all these different companies working together and they're even referring to each other. They've had such a great stay in one place. This is, this was the point of Have You Got. Have You Got is not really, um, it's not in existence at the moment. I've had to pull a pin on it because I'm focusing on so many other things. But the whole idea was to collaborate with each other. If I would have a guest stay with me and then they would say, oh, have, we're going to Melbourne next. Have you got anything in Melbourne? Mm -hmm. No. But. You know, I wanted to be able to help my guests without them having to go and search for something else. You know, it's like here, here's my community and you can find something as good a quality with a great sort of service in this community. So that's, that's something that I think you guys should put together and even maybe Joy's 
join the stays group, <laughs> yeah. but you should have your own Disney community. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, it's an interesting concept, and I think we've we've tried to do that here, um, and uh, successfully for some of the companies. And but I think it comes down to quality. Um, we we have an issue, and I think it's an industry wide issue where we don't acknowledge the quality of the units, and it's creating a baseline um, where we all go by and and try to figure out okay, if we are a vacation rental industry, what is the baseline that we need to meet, mm-hmm. and. Most of us try to go by reviews. What you've done is you've taken it to the next level. I always say reviews are done, uh, you know, we can, we can encourage our guests to give us good reviews, five-star reviews, so we can get, Air, you know, Airbnb super host or premier host or whatever it is. Is it really truthful? Whereas what you've done is, and, and Matt, you can talk to this pretty close to what you did in your past career, which is we need an independent agency or people to come in and tell us how we're actually doing in our units. A lot of people are afraid of it, but there's so much value in having external companies to com- come and basically audit our processes, our procedures, everything from the booking to the stay. Can you talk to us a little bit about what that process looks like and, and what the end result could end up looking like for a property manager that does take on board the feedback that you guys give them? Yeah. Okay. I did want to go back onto reviews. I think actually Airbnb and their review system has really skewed the whole review system. Because you hear a lot about, oh, I'll give you five star if you give me five star. Or the password is, we'd love a five star review. (laughs) Reviews are supposed to be feedback. And you learn and you grow from your feedback. But everyone is so scared to give feedback because everyone wants good reviews. So it's it's the completely broken system. Well, Well, the review system is broken beyond that. People are conning people in reviews, right? So... We had an instance where we had a guest that didn't even stay at the house. Oh. Uh, we ended up having to do a last minute cancellation and she left us a poor review on one of the platforms and I couldn't even get the, the review taken down. Mm. So there was this fake review that existed on the platform. I lost and it was at the very beginning of, of our management company and we ended up losing uh, our status because of the single review mm. and they ended up returning all of the, they, they returned their money. Uh, and then they started asking for compensation on top of that. So not only did the guests not stay, but I ended up having to pay out a guest that didn't even stay at my property. Oh, no. Yeah. No. So people are get, catching on to a conning, mm-hmm. uh, which is, it, it, it takes it into a whole different level. Mm-hmm. And the other thing about reviews is you also see, this is where you read to see what's the manager or owner hiding. Because it's the reviews, it's really something's going to come out that's not in the listing. It's not, they're not being transparent about it. But you, I mean, this is the terrible thing. I mean, you want to read reviews, but you're going to get what is hidden Mm -hmm. when you you read the reviews. And, you know, I don't think that's the nicest thing to have to do, but that's why people are reading reviews. What are we hiding? You know, that's not. And and I think, you know, Brian, we've talked about this before, and I, I don't know that we ever... Get, but, you know, when you look at other types of lodging, there is kind of a ranking system so that your expectations, like I never, when I stay at a Marriott hotel, I never read the reviews because it's got a flag and that flag, you know, and it may be one of their, um, you know, one of their more cost, cost conscious flags, right. It, it, you know, it, um, you know, an express hotel and it, but because of that I kind of know what my expectations are. And then therefore I'm not disappointed if it doesn't have a butler service and things like that. But in vacation rentals, we don't have that. There's no concept of what's a five-star property. There's no real flags um, that have any real meaning to guess. Um, I don't think. So, you know, I think too, the Deborah, that's another issue, right? Which is there, there's no, there's not an independent source or a way for for guests to at least frame what they should be expecting before they rent. I know, Booking.com did try that. I mean, it's there. Mm-hmm. It's not stars. It's like it's little squares. They have given it given it a go, but the industry is very big, and there is not one body that will do that um, or that can do that. Yeah. But um, I, I think. The, the extreme between the, the low barrier to entry kind of property to the full luxury property, it's, 
Just I think there's more than five stars in too that. massive. In yeah, no, yeah, that's yeah. yeah, no, that's that's a yeah. valid point. So, but so Brian brought up the yeah. point. So when you so if someone hires you and says, "I really want you to, you know, really go through my guest experience and provide yeah. that feedback," tell us where you start yeah. and what that process yep. is for you. Yep. So from beginning to end, it starts landing on your website and searching for a property. It's usually a property that's already been agreed on. This is one, this is the one you're going to book, but I will test. Uh, first of all, I'll, I'll go through the, the website. I'll be looking for, you know, the reviews, be reading the about us page. I'll be going through the website thoroughly. I'll be testing every button. I will send an inquiry. I will see how long does it take to get an, a response. I will check if there's a live chat and uh, my feedback is uh, one particular website that I looked at, they had WhatsApp as the wife, as the live chat. And I know people like WhatsApp. However, in this particular instance on your homepage, it's not good because WhatsApp takes the guest off your website and away. You want live chat while the guest is looking at your property and scrolling through your website while they're getting the answer. So that's one little tip for you. <laughs> um, I check all the buttons. I send uh, emails. Uh, so then I book the property. So it's how, what's the process like to go through booking this property? How much are you asking me for? You know, is it too much? Is it too little? What's the whole process? And with every step, I document everything. I take screenshots. I, so there's proof. With, with all the emails, et cetera. So I, I, I go through the booking process. Then, you know, I get the booking confirmation email. I check all the wording of emails. So remember, I'm booking a property on a website. I don't know the property. I don't know the website. I actually did an online service for a woman. And it took me to click on the blog page to see the, head, the heading of one blog, things to do in blah, blah, blah state of a state of America because up until that point I didn't know where her property was not anywhere even the phone number didn't have a plus one so it's like okay you want me to book this property I don't even know where it is there's nothing mm. so I booked the property and then the journey starts with okay what emails am I getting how many am I getting what information am I getting? Am I getting excited before I go? Mm. Um, am I feeling like, hang on a second, I haven't heard anything from this company for a while. Is my booking still safe? And or is it the other extreme where, okay, you know what? I feel like I'm being spammed now. This is there's too many emails. So for example, there was one one that I did that I got eleven emails prior to arrival, and not one of them was hey, this is what's going on when you're in town and that sort of thing. It was all to do with, now I need your guest info, your, your, I need to check your uh, ID verification. Now I need, need your security deposit and now I need your check-in time. Oh my God. So I document all of that. Okay, so what's check-in going to be like? Do I know where I'm going? How smooth is check-in? Do I have to go to an office? What are the instructions like? What's it going to feel like work, walking at, uh, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon, full sun to an office to get a key? Uh, how easy is it to find the apartment based on the instructions? How easy was the lockbox? Now, lockbox, if I'm going to say that uh, I personally, I don't like lockboxes. But if you are going to use a lockbox, get your mum to open it or get your grandmother to open it. Give them the instructions and see how they go. See how they get into the apartment or the home or whatever, give them the test because there was one property. I wasn't even the guest inspector, but there was one property. It took me three goes to open the lockbox. Then it took me, I don't know, five different goes with the two locks to try to open the door. And in the end, I shoulder shoved the door and opened it. So I didn't realize it wasn't part of the check-in instruction, shove the door with your shoulder to get in. <laughs> so then once I'm inside, okay, what's it like? Does it look like the photos that I, that I booked? Does it look like the property that I booked? Where's the Wi-Fi password? First question, you walk in the door, where's the Wi-Fi password? Is there a, a digital welcome book? Is the Wi-Fi password, you know, a QR code on the fridge? How easy is it to settle in? How quickly do I feel at home? Now, this is what I, I personally, with my property management business 
and with me as a guest, I, I do like the face-to-face meet and greet. I know as you scale, you probably can't do it, but the face-to-face meet and greet, what I find is that if you have just arrived in a foreign city, you've met a local, you can ask them, where's the nearest supermarket? Where's the great bar? Where do I get the bus? Whatever. And you have already tapped into the city. You've connected with the city by talking to a local. When you walk in with a lockbox, you're still a foreigner. You haven't tapped into that city yet. You haven't got a feel for it. You haven't heard the accent. You haven't asked questions, you know. So that's that. Check in. And then, of course, living in the property, well, that's when you start finding things, you know, about is there a peeler Uh, uh, or in the shower there was a tile sticking to my foot in the shower. Like, what the hell? Okay. Now, this is actually how the guest inspector sort of came to be. I I started noticing at one property that I was having my coffee every morning at quarter past 10, but I don't have my coffee at quarter past 10, but every day was quarter past 10. So the wall clock had a dead battery and I was like, okay. I wonder how long it would take for anyone to realize or to change that. Not a big issue. However, the floor tile, okay, that's not very pleasant. And then it made me think, who is supposed to tell the property manager about these things? It's certainly not the guest. And if the cleaner is there it, on their time, their program is timed. They're not going to tell you that the sink isn't draining and it's got all dried toothpaste spit, you know, on the basin. Because it's, you know, you, you won't drain probably. They're not going to tell you that. So this is why staying in your property and actually living in it is so important because this is where you're going to find these things. So there was one property I stayed in. There was a bathroom that was accessed by two bedrooms. So the same four people are going to share this bathroom. I was there on my own. I had a shower, two towels, long hair, body. Uh, I went to hang one towel on one hook. And then I turn around and it's like, okay, where do I put the second towel? And it's only me. What the hell? If there's four people, it's, let's assume that two might be girls with long hair. There could be six towels. Yeah. Wait a second. And this is actually one thing that I find in all properties. There's never enough places to hang towels. If you, if you have a property that sleeps six people, make sure you've got room for at least six towels to be hanging to dry. Because you don't want the property to look like a campsite with, with towels draped over the dining chairs. This is not what the guest has paid for in terms of the guest experience at your property. It's a small thing, but it's a big thing. Towel rails. I'm getting a bit passionate about the <laughs> towel rails. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's amazing. Even me on my own, I have an issue with where to put my towels. It's incredible. So, um, to stay at the property, then check out. Checkouts are usually pretty straightforward. I haven't been asked to strip any beds, and I'm not going to do that. Uh, usually it's take the rubbish out. Now, you know what? Sorry, guys, but on my last day, I'm already going out with all of my baggage. I'm not taking the rubbish out with me. The cleaner might want to empty a vacuum. The cleaner can take the rubbish out. You know, I don't think uh, I don't think it should be up to the guests to take the rubbish out. Tidy up, of course. Do the dishes, of course. But you know, take uh, having an extra trip out to the street, wherever the rubbish may be, on the morning that you're packing up your stuff to go to the airport or catch a train. Yeah, that's one journey out to the rubbish bin that you don't need to do, or you shouldn't have to do. And then beyond that, it's like, okay, when am I being asked for my review? Because if I've already left the property. I've already gotten on with my life. Don't ask me for some of my time. I'm busy at the next property or I'm busy back at work or I'm busy, you know, dealing with kids. Not that I have kids, but, you know, that a mum is dealing with kids. They're not going to want to write a review when their life is back to normal. Yeah. My, my philosophy is you catch them the day before they leave. They might be online anyway, checking emails, checking in for a plane checking directions, catch them while they're in there and looking around and thinking, God, we don't want to leave. That's when you want to catch them. Yeah. So that's pretty much where the journey, what, what the journey is. It's really from beginning to end and, and really a property, I mean, the, the least a property manager should do is live in the property for two or three nights, live in it. Notice that there's the fry pan is all scratched. Notice that, you know, all the utensils in the kitchen are metal. So it's no wonder your fry pan's all scratched. Have you got enough uh, cutlery? 
you know, like I said about a peeler, a sharp knife, a chopping board. There's so many things that you may take for granted. A bottle opener. I went to one place. They gave me a welcome bottle of wine. Oh, that's nice. I do like that as a little welcome gift. I think that's lovely. A few days later, I thought a glass of wine would be nice. And no, bottle openers. Oh my God. Okay. So I was actually having a chat with the other people about this. And apparently in America, bottle openers go missing. Actually, America and Europe, they go missing. In Australia, mine would multiply. So I'd set up a property. I'd have one bottle opener. Yep. Get, get you going. And then I would go and stay in one of my properties and, oh, I've got three now. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why. Bottle openers would multiply. Teaspoons would disappear. Mm-hmm. Must be in this Australian thing. I don't know. Yeah. It, it's interesting. So that, that's my feedback. Maybe, maybe we need to implement some of the restaurant, uh, what they would do. Teaspoons, they have magnets in the trash cans. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's what they do. So Brilliant. They, oh, yeah. So, so they don't throw it away. Um, yeah. yeah. It reminds me when yeah. you, Brian, we were talking before we got on, I think we're somewhere in the sixties as far as the number of episodes, but I think our, was our second episode, Simon Lehman. I think and it was I think first. First? It, uh, second I, episode. It, no, yeah. it was the second because we did the first one. But he talked a lot about this, about, you know, when you, you know, you go to go mm-hmm. outside and it's raining and you reach for the umbrella and there's no umbrella there. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and he, he famously likes to travel with his own set of knives because dull yeah. knives and vacation rentals, nothing sets Simon off more, I think, than dull. But <clears throat> it, sorry, it, I'm just going to interrupt you for a yeah. because I had a little dig at Simon on my web <laughs> on the guest inspector. If you scroll down and it says, oh, and we'll sharpen your knives too. <laughs> <laughs> that was for Simon. It's just for Simon. <laughs> But I do think. But you're right. I, yeah, we just don't think through these be, things. A, a property, it, you, they, you say people say you're home away from home, but holiday rental shouldn't be better than your home mm. away from home. If not the same, but at at least the same, if not better. <laughs> well, and and I think there's an element of time. So I think one of the issues that we have is that we. Well, I don't know. We, I speak for us here, but we turn units around very fast. And so quality tends to go down the drain a bit because we're not really thinking about going into the house, testing a knife or testing all 10 knives, maybe 20 knives to see if they work. Mm-hmm. And if it's not sharp, we're going to be sharpening it all day long. Um, and, and I think that that's where the difference is between us and hotels is that hotels have minimized the amount of things that they have in their units and it's manageable Mm -hmm. whereas a vacation rental is almost unmanageable because of the quantity of things that we implement inside of those homes and then if something disappears it's very hard to track and keep just just keep good constantly so we rely on our staff to be able to figure out what that is fix it and make sure that it's right for the next guest Mm -hmm. and the expectation from the guest is that everything is 100 percent. well if i only have and we moved away from this model, which is having back to backs, like having a guest leave at 10 o'clock in the morning and checking in at four o'clock in the afternoon. It's just not manageable. Uh, it drives the team insane. There's no way to properly check the house. If something's wrong, I can't fix it in four or five hours to the expectation that I have for my company. So we moved it to 24 hours next day check in. But is that where? we then start to become a little bit, well, massively different from hotels and, and, and the guest experience because we're not just managing a single room. We're managing an entire house and a house that is packed full of goods. Um, and if that's the case, how do we streamline this process so that we make sure that the things that you're talking about are presentable for a guest? We can't change a couch overnight. Each house has a completely different couch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Look, I think it boils down to either training your cleaners and paying them to be there a little bit longer than the the time it takes for them to clean. Whenever I used to, I used to have a a big five bedroom house I used to manage. And whenever I went in for a checkout, I would always open up every cupboard and put everything back where it belonged. That's when I knew where everything was and that everything was there. And it's almost like maybe that's the sort of system you have to have Mm -hmm. where the chopping boards belong here, the sharp knives belong here, and there's no reason why you can't put a knife sharpener in the property. You don't have to be sharpening the knives, but if the guest finds it's it's a bit 
dull. They can sharpen the knives, give them something, you know, give them a piece of equipment to use. Um, and maybe the cleaner then does it. I mean, it's, it's really the basics because an egg flipper, you know, I don't know what you call them, but people don't know what an egg flip is. <laughs> the thing that flips the egg, it's not going to go missing. But you want to make sure you've got one because I've been in places that they don't have it. So people are going to be doing things in the fry pan with a fork, a metal fork and scratch your fry pan. Mm. So you want, you know, at least one big knife, one bread knife, one paring knife, something like that. So it's just three knives that the cleaner has to find and put them there. I mean, put them back where they belong or a knife magnet with the chopping boards underneath. Arrange it in such a way that at a glance, you can see the most important things. The bottle opener is important. Count the number of teaspoons is important. But, um, you know, maybe you just need to have a stash at the house in a, in a cupboard, lock cupboard or in your storeroom with your company and make sure the cleaners, you know, carry around a little supply just in case so they can top it up. Sure, a broken couch or, you know, cigarette burn or something, it's, that's tricky. But, yeah. uh, but I think yeah. what, what Deborah's talking about too, uh, Brian, is first you got to document it. If you can yeah. document what your experience, your guest experience that you want them to have looks like, Figuring out, I, I think scalability is still an issue, but it gets easier if it's documented. You, you know, I, we, I've, I've talked to a property manager who they take some of their best reservationists, cleaner, you know, it's kind of a year end reward as the season's starting to wrap up and they'll put them in homes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a staycation for them, but there mm -hmm. is work. They're asked to, you know, there's a process and while they're staying in the home, and getting that feedback. So I think there's ways that you can, you can replicate it, but you've got to start from the core of, do you even know you being the owner, do you even know and have documented what the experience is? Cause if not, I mean, you, you don't have a chance. I think that's an interesting exercise internally for your team, but also for homeowners. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you put your homeowners on the hook and you say, look, I want you or our coming part of the platform, I want you to stay at your property for maybe two or three seasons. Come for a week. Don't come for a day. Come for a week. Stay in your property. And I want you to go through this checklist, not because I want you to do work for me, but I want you to experience this as a guest in your own house. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it takes the onus off of the property manager telling the owner what's wrong with the property and the property owner recognizing what's wrong with their own property. Trying to see it. Starting to see, yeah. No, that's that's a valid point, um, Deborah. As we start to wrap up, so if um, if our listeners want to get in contact with you um, about these services, because I do think, and and uh, you know, I did mention before we got on in the restaurant industry. For those of you who are listening, some of you may know that's the industry I came to before I got into vacation rentals. Mystery shoppers, third party guest experience companies are, they're the norm. Uh, in fact, in fact, there's actually, you know, based on what types of restaurants you're running, there's some, you know, they specialize at, at different, you know, different levels of restaurants and things like that. And it is odd to me that we don't do more of this as an industry, but if they wanted to get in contact with you, what, what's the best way to do that? Yeah. So you can get in touch with me at wave at the guest inspector.com. And that's inspector, I double N, like, like staying at the end. Staying at the end. <laughs> uh, I also just want to uh, add actually as part of the service. So at the end of the service, you get a report and it gives you all the documentation. It gives you the flow of the booking. It also gives you recommendations. So for example, you know, where were your reviews? What was your about us page mm. like? And this was actually the birth of Texplained, the, the Texplained series, because I figured if I'm suggesting to a company about reviews or about offering experiences as a great, you know, upsell, I thought if I can send them to an interview about what this company offers, then that, you know, they may take it on board. So not only did I need to learn about what everyone in the industry is offering, it was used as a resource as in the final report that you get, if, if, I, if I can make any recommendations to improve your guest's experience, the Texplain interviews form part of that report. 
That, and I should, yeah. should have mentioned that. So among her <laughs> other 22 other jobs, Deborah <laughs> runs a, an excellent, um, well, it started off as, is a YouTube, did it start off as a podcast and then went to video or how did there was a, but it's text explained and it is so cool because what she does is it's really, really short and it, the, she brings on the latest Technology, I was going to say latest and greatest, but I'm sure some of them aren't great and some of them are, but that's the <laughs> point, right? Which is she brings on these technology companies and says, what do you do? Why should, you know, um, why should lodging providers, vacation rental managers care? Why should they mm -hmm. hire, you know, why should they you know, buy your service or buy your product? Yeah. And um, for all the really, really busy property managers out there, it is often described as, being able to constantly walk the vendor showroom floor at a Verma International without actually having to go to Verma International. So if you haven't checked it out, make sure you do. It is excellent. It's a lot of fun. And um, Deborah does a great job with that. So, um, well, Deborah, thank you so much. Really appreciate you joining us. I know you're busy and um, you're you're in France and I think you're headed back to, to, to go for another swim. So no one's yeah. going to feel sorry for you. <laughs> Zero people. <laughs> Zero people. Thank you for joining yeah. us. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. It's been great. Yeah. That's it for this week's episode of Guest X. Be sure to sign up for our email list at guestxpodcast.com. That's guest, the letter X, podcast.com. And follow us on your favorite podcast app so you never miss an episode. We are Mr. Guest Experience, Brian Hamawi and Matthew Loney, signing off and reminding you to always create a customer experience worth talking about. This podcast is a Hospitality.fm production.